Hey guys, EVP Man here, and yes, I am completely armored up because today we're going to be reviewing the Creality 3D print mill. This is the CR30. Let's check it out. Boy, am I happy we weren't wearing this for the entire video because it was getting pretty hot in there. Uh, and you may be asking yourself, why was I armored up? Well, today we're taking a look at a special printer that is going to be the perfect printer for someone who's looking to print large props like this sword here. We're talking about the Creality CR30, and this is a printer that was a joint collaboration between Naomi Wu and Creality. And like I mentioned, this is the perfect printer, not only for props, but this is the great printer for someone who's looking to have mass production 3D prints. It's a cross between a 3D printer and a conveyor belt. And the print head is uniquely positioned in a 45 degree angle, which really allows you to print on this conveyor belt almost an infinite number of prints. Uh, for me, as someone who likes printing cosplay type gear, or let's say um, props like this, this is a dream to have because you can, again, print these full prints. A traditional printer, if I were to have this on, let's say, any of the other printers that we reviewed on the channel, this print would have been printed in sections. I would have printed this section, this section, and then maybe the hilt in another section. And then I would have glued them all together. In this case, I was able to print the entire print in one print. And let me just show you something. As I flip this over, you're going to notice that I've printed only half of the sword. So I have another half of the sword printed, and they come together, and as I glue them, they become one. Now, not only can you print them in halves like this, but you can also print them um, in, in a complete, both sides together. And you see this in this specific view here, where we're actually printing out Thor's axe, the new axe, in a smaller scale, but we're doing it in a full piece where we're printing it on the print bed in this way. So I'm testing out that print model to see how well it prints and if I'm going to get stronger prints and more importantly, prints that have very little gluing or maintenance that has to be done to them. Now this printer features a dual gear metal extruder and a filament runout sensor as well as, check this out, a brake detection sensor. And this has actually happened to me. During my test, my filament broke and it detected it and it saved my print. So this is something that is incredibly uh, useful and important to me as someone who large, likes to print like large prints. Now the other thing about this is that this printer is super quiet. So if you don't have a dedicated space, you have, let's say, a shared space, and maybe uh, you're either with a roommate or, like I am, married, and you have this in a place that it's a common space, you want something that's quiet and it's not going to disrupt your, either your roommate or your family. Well, this is definitely the printer for you. Now, this printer also has the ability to print in a variety of materials. So you have PLA, TPU, and PETG. Now, get this. The print volume. This is pretty spectacular. We're talking about 200 by 170 by infinity. And you heard that right. It's infinite because since the belt is rotating, you can actually print extremely large objects. This sword, look at this. And it's not ending, and there it is. Imagine the kind of things that you can print with this printer. Virtually a never ending print bed. Pretty spectacular. Now, one thing I wanted to highlight about this printer is that this printer isn't the fastest printer that we have reviewed. It's actually not built to be the fastest printer. It's more about giving you more accurate prints and also lengthy prints. Uh, and the other thing I'll mention to you is that if you have used a 3D printer before, when you start using this printer because of the 45 degree angle and because of how the bed is designed, there is a learning curve and it's probably longer than you would expect. But I will say, stick in there, try it learn how to, I would say, use the printer, how to level the printer, because once you get it, you get spectacular prints like this. It's really worth it. Now, while the conveyor belt is one of the most standout, unique features about the CR30, the heating mechanism and how it heats the print surface is also really unique. And as you can see here, the primary heat surface is going to be where your print head meets the actual bed itself, or that conveyor belt. But other areas of the printer are heated as well. And that was a surprise to me. I don't know if this is just uh, heat leaking through the sides, but you notice on each side, uh, the rails themselves also tend to warm up. And at the very front, where you have the Creality logo, that also warms up as well. Now, as we take a look at the prints, because I know that that's one of the things you want to look at, I wanted to highlight the type of filament that we're using and the print temperature that we use throughout. So we've been printing this at 210, and the build surface, uh, or the belt itself, has been at 65. 
And what you can see here is the type of filament. We've been using the same smart filament in both cases. We've been using uh, a silk silver and then also a blue. And this is the Pro 3 3D filament and it's their PLA. Um, really, really love the overall print quality. Haven't had any clogging issues with this filament. Uh, and the overall look of what's been printed through it has been absolutely gorgeous. So let's take a look at some of the prints. Now the very first thing we wanted to test on the CR30 was its ability to print in mass. So using some of the samples that were included on the included SD card, we ran some prints and we also changed some colors so that we can see how things would look. So these are the two primary colors that we've been printing. So this is a mass production print and the way they came off the conveyor belt is that they came out two at a time and then they would drop off. Uh, so as you take a look at the prints themselves, the prints overall came out really nice and keep in mind that I've done no tweaking. So this is using the standard Creality settings and and I haven't been testing or improving or refining in any way the prints. And for those of you who uh, are new to printing, you have to spend some time tweaking your printer. No matter how many printers you have, you, the profile needs to be adjusted to meet the specs of what you're looking for in print quality. So we'll highlight some of the things that are good and some of the things that need to be tweaked, right? And these are things that you can overcome with some tweaking. The first thing that you'll notice is that overall, this looks pretty clean, but you'll notice these little lines here, these small imperfections. And then you'll also notice here at the very bottom how this area right here is kind of like, um, I would say a little bit bent over, right? And this is where the actual print first started. I saw that happen to a couple of the prints and you can see that here. Uh, you can see the actual adhesion uh, or the heat adhesion on the bottom. And then you can see overall um, some slight defects here. But overall, for a first print without any tweaks, I thought these were really good. I did switch the filament here, and then you'll notice that I ran into, again, that little um, elephant foot that some people call it on the side here. Uh, but all in all, you know, we saw some good prints, especially if you look at this side. You saw some slight defects here and the seams right here. But it was something that I think that we can overcome with uh, some form of tweaking and adjustment of the settings. Now, the next print we downloaded from Thingiverse, and we did some adjustments, right? So I wanted to see how much better the prints can get with some tweaking. This is still with the same smart filament, and I just want to show you the back of this print. Look at how clean this is, right? And again, this isn't 100% tweaked yet because I have some defects that I have to go through, but this was with just some adjustments. So look how clean this print is here, and as I go on the side here, you notice how clean this print came out. If we look at the top, this is really, really nice. It has a slight defect there that we can clean up, and then under the nose, there is also a slight defect, and then I would say under the chin. But keep in mind, no supports. This was with zero supports, and overall, I think that the initial tweaking that I did really turned out really well. And then from a print perspective, I see that I still have some, some work down here. You can notice at the bottom, uh, is, a still, is still an area of, of improvement. But I think I can get away with, if I have some type of raft, or some type of initial surface, I can clean that up as well. Now the next thing I wanted to show you close up is the actual sword that we printed. And this is a Gladius, and I just wanted to show you the overall quality. And again, this was a print where we did this, the half print. So notice the overall quality here, right? And I'm very, very happy with this print. And this was again with some more tweaking. And I wanna say that this was one of my best prints. I really didn't see that elephant foot that we saw in some of the other prints. So I'm just gonna to continue to move this so that we can get this on camera because this is a very, very long print. Now one of the areas that I would say that there's an opportunity for me to do some adjustments is right here. Again, no supports at all. So we didn't print this with any supports, but you see that there's some stringing here, but I have to say that this is really easy to clean. Um, look at over here, uh, this area, how it looks so nice, uh, the grip area. Very nice uh, finish, right? And then what I'll do is I'll flip it over so you can see the half side of it, right? So this is what the half side looks, and you can see it looks pretty darn good. Now this very last print is uh, Thor's Stormbreaker Axe. And what I did is I reduced it by 50%. Uh, and so this is what it looks like, right? Reduced by 50%. So. The one thing though, it cracked on me, right? So, and this was a 19 hour print and this is my second print. And I was just raising the infill and just to see, so this has a 25% infill. My previous version only had like a 5% infill and I was trying to get the fastest print uh, out so that I can show you guys what the actual print looked like. So this is my second attempt with a 15% um, a increase in the infill. So this one also cracked on me. So I think that I have to upgrade it even one step further, maybe a 50% infill or increase the wall thickness. But I just wanted to share with you, and, and excuse the tape that you see there, the overall quality. And again, this is gonna require some refinement and some adjustment, but I just wanna highlight some of the things that came out really nice. So first of all, this area right here 
is pretty fantastic. I think that the overall treatment here of the handle um, and then the wood treatment right here is pretty good. I have to clean this up even further. I just wanted to give you a sense of what it looked like. I didn't take off every single part of the supports, but some cleaning is required. And as I flip this over, you'll notice that there's uh, a different approach here. This isn't a spliced print. This is actually a full print. So what I did is, I actually printed it out on the conveyor belt just like this and I had the entire bottom had supports because I wanted to see what it would look like if I did this. And I want to print that Gladius over but I'm going to print it full and I'm going to have it um, is a full piece not a split. So as you see this right here, notice the overall quality, notice the kind of like the wood treatment and I'll have to say that even though I had supports on the bottom, the supports came off pretty clean. So you'll notice that there's not a lot here. Maybe some light sanding can get this off and this would be a nice prop. Over here, I have to still do some cleaning. I wanted to show you what it would look like with leaving some supports on, but the supports peel off really nicely. And then you'll see right here that this seems pretty clean, but you have some supports here. Uh, I did print out supports on this one because of all these pieces. And as I flip it over here, you'll notice that I took out the supports here, but I have some supports right here. So overall, if we were to look at the print quality, again, some really nice print quality, uh, some prints going on here, but there's some slight defects, right? I just need to look at adjusting those to get a cleaner print. But at the same time, because this is a, a war hammer, I kind of like that. I think it gives it some character. So guys, that wraps up our review of the Creality CR30 3D print mill. See you in the next one.